What's up YouTube? In this video, we are going to go over BRP Incorporated, ticker symbol D-O-O-O. Year to date, this company is down 10% over the course of one year, basically flat. Currently trading close to its 52-week lows as well. It's about, you know, 4 or $5 away. And once we get to the stock chart, we'll see that these 52-week uh, lows are actually sitting on a pretty heavy support range. So this company doesn't report their next earnings until early in December, but their last quarterly earnings they beat on top and bottom line. Also in their earnings release, they're giving us fiscal year 24 guidance and outlook and uh, pretty good guidance, honestly. We got net income, I think, is uh, pretty decent coming in at about 20% growth, even a slightly higher than that, maybe even 25% growth rate in that range uh, for the next year, which is pretty good. And then we've got revenues also doing pretty good. They're forecasting seven to 10% growth rate. So their revenues are only gonna grow a little bit, but their net income is gonna grow a bit more based on their forecast. And they're also gonna reduce their capital expenditures from 750 down to mid, you know, somewhere between 650 and 700. So reduce CapEx almost potentially $100 million. So pretty good guidance from the company. BRP makes basically utility sport vehicles. They've got these Can-Ams, off-road and on-road Can-Ams. They make Sea-Doo's, they make pontoons, they may also make uh, snowmobiles as well. And they've also got a, a list of other brands here that they are associated with as well. So we can maybe click on, uh, you know, Quintrax here. And here they've got a different type of a boat besides just a pontoon. They look like fishing boats and other types of boats uh, that they are associated with. So that gives you a little quick rundown of what they are involved with. But we're going to hop into the financials on this company because what we're trying to do here is find companies that are kind of off the beaten path a little bit companies that aren't very well covered and people uh you just don't hear people talking about specific companies so i got this list coming up of different criteria that'll help us potentially find some underpriced companies that are that can give us a pretty good return on our, on our money so what we're really looking for here is our earnings yield and return on invested capital now we know for an average like the market can do like 10 to 12 percent so we want to see companies that we're going to evaluate going forward that can produce earnings yields above 10 to 12 percent currently this company is has hit has a history of earning below but is then now trending up uh into that range and might continue higher yet. So company earnings yield, not exactly where we want it, but I think it's headed in the right direction and doing it quickly. Also return on invested capital, we wanna see 15% or more in this company has no problem historically doing that. So that's another two key components to these future stock valuations that we will be doing. But over here, we can see our revenue, gross profit, and net income on the company, all three trending higher, and uh, revenues are growing and have exploded over the last couple of years here. Also, keep in mind, all these numbers are reported in Canadian dollars, and those will transfer over to USD once we get over to the calculators as well. So we got gross margins on the company, just consistent at about 25%, hasn't really done too much there. Net margins are starting to tick up and grow, which is good. We want to see that. Growth rate over at the company uh, historically usually seems to be about 10% or more. Obviously, 2022, something happened there. But overall, growth rate on the company and as of lately has just blown up. P.E. ratio historically, again, I mean, you can see here's where we're sitting at 7.4 uh, P.E. and has done double that in the past and, and then some on lesser numbers. So cash is short-term debt. This is where things aren't exactly ideal. We do have cash to short-term debt so 2.7 billion dollars in canadian to 174 million dollars cash to total debt we've got 5.4 billion to 1.7 or sorry 174 million dollars so so balance sheet less than ideal not a very strong balance sheet right there but we also can come up here we can see a good chunk of what could be cash is held in inventories of 2.2 uh, billion there so there is they do have quite a bit of inventory right now at the company so that would be something to keep an eye on making sure that's not going to continue to grow because every we can see year over year here this is trailing 12 months this is last year's numbers they're up quite a bit so that they're not it doesn't seem like it's impacting the business because the business is growing so rapidly but i think it's definitely worth keeping an eye on going forward making sure those inventories don't run up too quickly or at least shrink a little bit. That's That would be more ideal is to see inventories 
uh, run back down a little bit. Net income to free cash flow. We have more net income to free cash flow. Doing pretty good there. We're almost pulling. We're definitely growing our free cash flow, which is uh, very good. We need that. So we can see over here free cash flow. Historically, it is growing, but it's kind of all over the place. So not very consistent free cash flow. But maybe we can start seeing, based on their projections for next year, maybe we can start seeing some record free cash flow numbers coming in. Share count dilution. They are buying back shares and have done a very good job of doing so. We can see that they used they issued 120 million shares. Now currently sitting at about 81 million shares. The company does pay out a small dividend. Sitting at about 40 cents per share, giving us a 77% or sorry, 0.77% dividend yield. Right after 2020, the company did cut its dividend, probably for good reasons, probably for uncertainty of the future, and left it there for a little bit, but recently has uh, grown that dividend, placed that dividend back on track to where the trajectory appears to have uh, should be. Capital expenditures on the company, uh, again, we're hoping to see next year, like they've forecasted, a reduction in CapEx from 700 mil down to maybe like 650 million. So CapEx, hopefully that decreases a little bit. That'll increase our free cash flow and uh, financials on this company, except for the balance sheet. The balance sheet's a little scary, but... Everything else, in my opinion, looks pretty decent at this company. We have two other companies to compare to. We have Polaris and Harley Davidson. And uh, Harley Davidson, obviously, we know is basically just motorcycles, not really too much of a comparable to BRP, but Polaris definitely is much more of a comparable in this scenario. So we got our market cap revenue. Um, some of these are in different currencies here. Obviously, Harley Davidson would be in USD and Canadian over here. So we won't look at these two charts because they will not be accurate. We do have growth rate. Looks like Polaris has a higher growth rate in the next five years projected from analysts. However, if we come up here, we have 14 analysts covering Polaris and only four analysts covering BRP. So that kind of throws these numbers off a little bit because there's less people covering this, which could then, you know, maybe make this a little inaccurate on the growth rate going forward. But that's kind of what we're looking for is we're trying to find these companies that a lot of analysts aren't covering, which could give us the upper hand to finding good deals on certain companies. Gross margin sitting at 25% across the board. And, and really, we're just going to compare these two because they're more comparable. And we can see 25%. So BRP, much better. Gross margins, operating margins, obviously better. Profit margins, also better. Free cash flow, again, return on invested capital and PE. So we're paying... A lower premium for this company with better margins and free cash flow and return on invested capital is better. Earnings yield though, basically identical. Over here at the calculator spreadsheet, we have Peter Lynch valuation for BRP is $110.94. Multiples comparison between these two that we just compared to gives us a price tag of $61.79 per share. Our manual PE tells us it'd take about nine basically 10 years to earn our current market cap. Price the book, we're not gonna look at this one. This one's kind of, so their total assets and total liabilities are basically the same. And then you divide out shares and that gives you a, a ridiculously high price to book. Peg ratio, telling us right now, our peg is very undervalued, forward-looking and even more undervalued. Graham's valuation, shockingly gives them $256 per share. I'm going to have to make, I think, an adjustment to that. And we'll put, we'll give them a one for growth uh, just because I feel like 256 just doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. So we come down here, we have dividend discount model. Also, we have a growing dividend because of their recent uh, large jump in their dividend where they went from basically eight, 11 cents up to 40 cents for a dividend payout. That's showing that we had a dividend increase of 241%. So I think what we can probably comfortably do is maybe change this to maybe like 10%. And then that gives us a different, uh, a, a probably more accurate dividend discount model valuations. And come over here to the discounted cash flow valuation. And analysts have a free cash flow growth rate of 74%, historically 129%. I uh, said, you know what, we're going to do 25%. Uh, and that still gives them a DCF price per share of $165.81. Rule 72 on this company, not, not looking too hot, but there isn't too much EPS growth rate forecasted on this company. So we're we're just going to go with what we can find and leave it at that. So we have our two EPS growth rates, which gives us an average growth rate of basically 10%. That goes into 72, 7.2 times. 
Then we get to double our EPS 1.3 times. So basically once and then just shy of three times. So what we can do is change our future EPS roughly to maybe 22 which then gives us a fair value today of $109.10 per share. On our summary for this company, currently trading at $67.28 per share. Our fair market value on the company is $131.71, 30% margin safety, $92 with an analyst price target of $115 per share. So uh, kind of giving us a pretty good idea that this company is very undervalued and financials are looking pretty decent minus the balance sheet also if you guys are interested in this spreadsheet with all these different formulas calculators information all this data it is available on patreon and there will be a link in the description down below for you guys to check that out if you're interested under the stock chart for brp uh we can see we got three different trend lines drawn in here we've got our longer term trend line of making higher highs and higher lows we've also got resistance roughly about 92 dollars per share we've also got support down here at about 60 dollars per share as well in that range anyway maybe call it 60 to maybe 53 dollar range here so somewhere in this range is potentially a an accumulation range um, obviously, so because of what this company does, it sells power sport toys, right? For anybody to purchase. And obviously if we're running into a potential recession, you know, people aren't going to be buying and spending more money on these that this company is coming out with. So I think that is a pretty big headwind and, uh, uncertain headwind that people are being, which is why I think this is stock is actually pulling back is because of that. And it makes sense, but Technically speaking here, if this thing does pull back into the $60 range, and if, you know, eventually things are going to turn around, people are going to start buying more and ordering, pre-ordering more of these toys, and they're not forecasting a decline in the future. So they're they're seeing growth still. They're still seeing demand and everything like that. So I think, uh, and maybe investors don't quite believe that, which is maybe why the stock is running down lower. And obviously this doesn't have a big following to it as well. Um, so I think this thing actually has a pretty good potential for uh, rebroding shareholders in the future of, you know, getting it growing up to that 130, to 115 to $130 price range, which is about double where it is right now. So, so that is it on BRP here. If you found value in this video, drop a like and subscribe. And if you want more of these uh, lesser known company videos, leave a comment letting me know. We will continue to deliver.